Hey everyone, welcome back to Talos. This is Jackson. Uh, today we're going to be talking about note taking. One of the big problems that I face is that I have dysgraphia, so it's hard for me to write things, especially by hand. Uh, so when I'm taking my notes and I'm typing, often I'll take too many notes, and that means that I won't be able to skim my notes and they'll be kind of useless to me, or I'll take too few notes, and so then I won't remember what my professor said. So one of the tips that I've had is I actually record my professor's lectures. Now, before you do any recording, make sure that you have permission from either your school or your professor or both. A lot of, it depends on your school, so you're going to have to talk to the school, but a lot of times you need to get permission from your school and then talk to your professors individually. So make sure you do that before you start recording. Uh, and please don't share your recordings. They're private unless your professor is giving you explicit permission. Uh, professors really are careful about uh, giving recordings of their teaching. So let's talk about some of the ways that we're going to do this. So why not just record all your notes on your phone and just leave it at that? The problem is that you can't actually go back to those recordings and find what you want to know. For example, if you have an hour long lecture and you record that whole lecture, you're not going to be able to find the specific place in that lecture where you were talking about the topic you're looking for. You're just gonna remember that it was somewhere around the 15 minute mark, if at all. Um, and so what you can do to help solve that problem is you can actually take a screen recording of you typing your notes. And I'll show you what that looks like in just a second. But for example, let's say that you were looking for the section when your professor is talking about cars. What you can do is you can go into the screen recording and look for the section where you were typing about cars and then listen to that screen recording. And that'll help you figure out what's going on. It's a really useful system, so we'll jump right in. Let's say we're in the stock and we want to take notes here. I really like Google Drive, but it doesn't have a way to embed audio in it. So what are we going to do? The beautiful thing that Apple did recently in Mojave was that it decided to build a special feature in which let you do screen recordings. Before, the way that you had to do it was you had to go into QuickTime, but the main thing is that this is a really, really simple way of doing it. So what you do is you command, shift, and five, and this little camera will pop up. So you have a few different options. You can either capture uh, the entire screen is or select window or portion, so this is like uh, taking a screenshot. Or you can record the entire screen or record a specific section. You're going to do record entire screen right here. And then you're going to hit options. And so we can save it to the desktop or we can save it to wherever. I'm just going to save it to the desktop so I can find it. And then microphone, do um, built-in microphone or whatever nice microphone you have if you have a nicer one and just make sure that everything looks right. Don't have a timer on this and don't worry about any of this stuff. Showing mask is, is probably a good idea. Anyway, so then we're going to hit record and then you'll see this little button up here that means it's recording. And so before we actually do anything, we wanna check our sound. So go to um, system preferences and type in sound and you're going to be routed to probably output tab, so go to the input tab here, uh, and make sure that when you speak, uh, or when your professor or whoever is speaking, that you, um, you are seeing noise. And remember, we don't take legal responsibility. You're really supposed to get your professor's permission to do this, um, or whoever legally you need to, but we're not giving legal advice, so you have to figure out that for yourself. Um, there's also some other options. You can use ambient noise reduction, um, and so what that means is that basically um, it'll stop um, just random noise in the background, like let's say there's an air conditioner, it'll try to block it out. I don't really think it matters that much, but you know, it's fine to use. All right, so we're gonna quit that. And so let's just start taking some notes. So let's say we're, the professor's talking about cars, and so then he says cars are big, and you say something about big, uh, and then you, you're, you're stuck trying to make these bullets. Uh, so then you say something about big, but he said a ton of stuff that you don't remember. And then he talked about the colors, and you missed that, and he talked about cameras. Um, and then you say colors, right? Okay, so then we're gonna hit stop uh, at the end of the lecture and you'll see down here that you can just have this little preview. Um, and so we have a few different things we can look at. So we can just preview it. And so before we actually do anything, we want, you have to figure out that for you. I don't really think it matters. So let's say we want to get to the part where he talked about um, colors. So we go there and we realize he probably said something before, and so cameras. Um, talked about the colors, and you missed that, and he talked about cameras. Um, so you can see that 
we can actually get to the section where he was talking about that and um, we, we know exactly what's going on. So it's a really easy way to kind of skim through your notes and be like, oh, that's, that's what he was talking about there. And so then you don't have to write every single word down, which is really, really nice. So then you hit, you hit done and then it'll save to your desktop because we said to save to the desktop. And then you're going to probably want to rename this and save this file somewhere, um, somewhere else. So this is going to be a uh, screen recording. So um, now let's talk about some of the other things that we can do. So first of all, let's talk about um, how to speed up the playback. So what we're going to do is we're going to download something called VLC Media. <clears throat> so this is the first method that we can speed up the playback. And we're going to just go download VLC. And again, don't uh, remember that um, the, uh, we don't take any legal responsibility for anything you do. Uh, so we're going to download that, and I already have it downloaded, but you're going to follow the guided setup. And once VLC is downloaded, go to VLC, which should be in your apps if you downloaded it correctly. So let's say that we want now, so we have VLC open, so we're going to take our video, and we're just going to drag that in there. And so before we actually do anything, so you can see it's playing, and then we're going to go to playback and increase the playback speed to two times. We go to uh, system preferences and type in sound. And you're going to so now you can see you can actually watch it a little bit faster. Now the quality on VLC is not great uh, when you're speeding things up. So there's another way to do this, which is a little bit more useful. So go to YouTube, and what we're going to do is we're going to actually upload our video. So go to YouTube and then click create, click create a video or a post, and go to upload video. Remember, please make sure you have the legal rights to do this, um, and don't do this without legal rights. And then click on public and click make it sure it's private. Do not put a public video out there that probably is going to be a privacy violation. So just make sure you're doing that and then drag your video into there. And I'm going to just let, wait until it's uploaded. I'm going to change something. So this is going to be note one class. Okay, so it says the processing is done. So we're going to hit done. Okay, so click on that link. You may not have the HD option yet um, and just you know go back to the page later, but you will have a uh, HD quality eventually if you upload it correctly. And if you don't have this little button up here, go watch my video on how to increase the video playback speed rate. If you do have it, great. Um, but if you don't, uh, for now, what you can do if you don't if you don't care um, about going super fast is go to speed and then change it to two times speed if you want to go faster. Um, but if you want to go faster than two times speed, you're going to have to go back to my other video, which I'll leave a link in the description uh, below. Anyway, so you can watch the video and click on that. So before we actually do anything, we want to check our sound. So go to uh, system preferences, talking about cars, and so then you go to big, but then you say something about big, but you say some stuff you don't remember. So this to me is actually really, really high quality, which is really nice to have. It's awesome, and the speed up quality is much better. I can go all the way up to uh, 16 times speed. I'm just going to go up to four times. And then about the colors, and this guy and top cameras. Uh, you say colors. So it's a little bit faster and a little bit easier. Now, one other thing we're going to do is we're going to hit edit video here. And what we're going to do is we're going to go to subtitles and CC. And we're going to hit add new subtitles. And eventually, there's going to be an auto-generated English option. You're going to click on that. And then it'll generate an auto-generated subtitle. So I'll come back once it's ready. OK, so now we're able to click on this button that says uh, English Automatic Published. Um, and so if it's not already published, then you're going to want to publish it, um, but it should already be there. So then let's say we go back to our video and we watch it. It will start playing, and um, if you click CC, it'll go to this captions. And so you'll have an auto-generated caption of whatever the person was saying. Uh, which is nice, but it's not even as good as it will get. So there's something even better about this that you can do. So what you can do is you can go to um, edit video again and go to subtitles in CC. And then what you're going to do is you're going to do, um, you're going to go to the published captions. Okay, so you're going to hit actions and you're going to hit download as an SP, SBV. I'm just going to download, then go to this little button here. Click show in finder, right click it, hit open with text edit, which is your going is your default setting. So what you now have is you have a transcript. So let's say I want to go to the section about cars and just read that. It'll actually take me there. Now the transcript is not perfect, but it's really helpful because now I actually have my professor's notes written down somewhere so that I can actually read them. And so to me, that's super, super helpful. I this is immensely useful if you want to skim a lecture and you're just not sure where to go.
All right, well, that's all for this video. I hope you've enjoyed it and found it helpful. In the future, we're definitely going to talk about other app taking systems like Notability and possibly OneNote. Uh, those app systems actually integrate this same idea into the notes itself. But the problem with some of those is that some of them cost money, some of them aren't very well designed. And the big problem for me is that I can't actually integrate all the apps that I want. So if you use Notability, for example, you have to be taking notes in Notability, and I don't like their word processing very much. In addition, certain classes require you to take notes on certain systems like Jupyter Notebooks for computer science courses, and you're not gonna be able to do that with Notability. So this is really useful for that. On the other hand, there are downsides to this. Uh, first of all, it drains a lot of your computer's batteries, so you're going to want to find a power outlet if you can in some of your classes. In addition, you're also going to have really large files, and so maybe we'll cover that. But the point is that there are downsides to this, and so there are instances where you're not going to want to be doing this. Anyway, I'll leave that up to you, and uh, definitely subscribe and leave a comment. One other thing, real quick, is that I've noticed that a lot of people are subscribing, but they aren't actually receiving notifications that when I posted a video. So if you look at the subscribe button, it's not just a subscribe button, but right next to it, after you've clicked subscribe, there's a little bell. Click on that bell if you want notifications of our videos. Then you'll know anytime that the videos pop up. All right, I'll see you next time.